Welcome to Day 331 of Shaped by the Word. I'm Paul Kemp here with David Keefe and Cindy Kemp. We continue in one of the richest sections of uh, Jesus' teaching in Scripture. You have the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, and you have the Upper Room Discourse, uh, which we find alone in the Gospel of John. Is Jesus is preparing to go to the cross. He's preparing disciples for an uncertain you know, next couple of days, but beyond that, a ministry into a hostile world. And so when we come to, uh, you know, John chapter 15, we come to really the heart of, you know, the upper room discourse. Uh, So before we read John chapter 15, let's uh, do as we all always do, remind ourselves that uh, we read Scripture, you know, not just simply to uh, do something that we ought to be doing because we're believers or uh, trying to gain, you know, more biblical knowledge. We read Scripture to know God, to know Him personally, to be enriched by His presence and conformed into the image of His Son and uh, through it to know Him better, to love Him deeper and to serve Him uh, far more effectively. So before we read, let's uh, offer ourselves in this moment to the Lord. Cindy, do you mind lifting us up in prayer? Father, we do thank You for this time in Your Word. And uh, just as Paul would say, this isn't um, a time to increase our knowledge um, so that we're smarter about your word, Lord, but a time where we do get to know you, know your heart, know the things that you care about and love. And so, Father, just ask that you would open our eyes to these things and that by your spirit you would teach us more and more of uh, who you are. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. John chapter 14 ends with the words, Come now, let us leave. So Jesus moves the conversation from the upper room where they had uh, just celebrated Passover together. And as they're walking, they continue uh, to talk. And so they pick up in uh, verse 1 of chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so it will be even more fruitful. You're already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what is the master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my Father as well. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my Father. But this is to fulfill what was written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the Advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father. He will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the very beginning. And so you can divide chapter 15 into, into two neat sections. One is a very warm section about 
uh, being deeply connected to Christ and bearing another fruit. And the other is just the, the, the consequence of living in a world that does not know God, uh, that it will be, you know, difficult, that we'll have difficulties. Uh, of course, the difficulties they had were far greater than the ones that we experience, but we too will experience persecution. Those who don't understand the Father or the Son won't understand us as well. So what are some of the things that uh, stand out as you look at uh, chapter 15? Um, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can You're up. I wrestled over that. <laughs> no, I just like the beginning. Uh, obviously, what stood out to me was when he's using that the I am phrases, which he constantly is using. But then when he says, I am the true vine. So it made me think, well, if he's the true vine, what vine are we talking about otherwise? And it's my understanding that vine is often referred to as, as Israel. No. And since you know, they. And Katie and I were talking off microphone you know, yesterday after. Uh, you know, looking, you know, looking at this passage, and she wouldn't it be cool if you know he passed by, you, you know, an orchard and you know, kind of pointed out and began to say that. Actually, you know, he probably would have from any place that he was in Jerusalem would have passed by the temple, and the top of the temple mm-hmm. was adorned with this uh, wonderful golden vine, mm-hmm. and the, uh, this vine kept growing as uh, mm-hmm. rich donors would offer more and more money in order to add to the beauty of the. The temple and a crystal of the vine did represent Israel, and he may have well gone by the temple, and he may have pointed up, you know, to the vineyard which represented, or to the vine which represented Israel, and said, "I, I am the true vine." Mm-hmm. It's not by your connection, you know, to Abraham uh, that uh, you are children of God. It's by your connection to me. It's not by being born an Israelite. It's about being, you know, born anew mm-hmm. uh, that you know me, mm-hmm. and it's only through that connection you know that you can bear fruit mm-hmm. and he tells you know he tells us you know he tells a story that's very similar to the one that you know paul tells us you know in in a, you know romans chapter 11 about branches being broken off and then of course in, in in romans 11 paul would even speak about branches being grafted in even though we're talking about olive tree this time <laughs> instead of a vine but it's you know the the, the same idea it's, the same. it's through your connection to the true vine or to the true root of righteousness mm-hmm. you know which is jesus and what good news that is um knowing it's not where we're born or how we perform or the things we do or don't do but it's our connection in Christ, this really uniqueness of, of the gospel, right? That even because of Christ, we, we can't do anything a, apart from him. We can't even bear fruit by ourselves. But if we do remain in him, that kind of close personal trust and obedience and, and, and living day by day with Christ, that is a, a huge call of what Christ has for his disciples. And apart from that, it's it's not joyful and it's not fruitful. I mean, you know, he, he paints a pretty clear picture here. Mm-hmm. Now there's there's no doubt, and you have to love the role of the father. I'm the true vine, and my father, you know, is is the gardener or the vine dresser or the, you know, the arbor. And of course, we have several oak trees in our yard, and uh, from time to time, we bring in, you know, people who will go up in the trees, and the, they'll do you know a couple of things. They'll cut away everything that is dead, and they'll also, you know, trim everything that is alive so the t- tree can uh, flourish. And, and of course, that's the same you know picture. You know, from the Father, and and of course, He takes away that which bears no fruit, which is not you know genuine, which is not real, which is an indictment of Israel. You know, although they have been the people of God, they have not borne the fruit of being the people of God. And of course, is a warning to us that as the people of God, it's incumbent on us to bear the fruit of God, and we don't bear the fruit of God by just trying harder to bear fruit. We bear the fruit of God by. Uh, maintaining and cultivating that deep relationship you know that we have in him mm-hmm. which is the work that the father is doing prunes every branch so that it'll be even more fruitful and pruning does not yeah, sound pain pleasant in that, yeah. <laughs> at all I guess I would take the pruning over being cast off into the it, fire it though thrown into the fire <laughs> yeah. yes even though there, yeah. there's no doubt in his love he disciplines and, us and, yeah. and obviously you know there's a rich array of things that the father does to make us fruitful many of them are joyful and positive some of them are not as he cuts away from us things you know that do not honor him and do not glorify him and yet i get this picture of the branch is almost in all of this is pretty passive i mean it's getting its nutrients and it's getting everything that it needs to bear fruit you know from that vine but then also 
the gardener is you know applying to the branches too so it's it's, it's kind of interesting how this fruit yeah, comes about you know in the gospel it's it's kind of an active pacifism exactly. yeah, <laughs> yeah it is in the mysterious in, in, in other yeah. words you know uh, Paul you know, saying work out your salvation and fear and trembling for it is God who works in you both to will and act according to his purposes the work is from beginning to end his but it does you know call on our mm-hmm. cooperation for it to come you know to its fullest and its richest you know, expression, uh, you know, as well. And of course, that's part of the mystery of, you know, the mystery of the gospel. But that is what he is emphasizing here mm-hmm. is we don't bear the fruit, we don't do the work. And uh, the thing that glorifies the Father is the Father's work being accomplished through us. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, it's in the context of, you know, chapter 14 and chapter 16, you know, through his spirit. And then he does move us towards keeping his commands, though, and does attach them to, you know, if we love him, then, you know, we care about his commands yeah. and certainly obeying them. Um, yeah, and love God and love your neighbor. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and we've talked about that, you know, a little bit yesterday, that, you know, that can be conditional. You know, the way that you, you know, prove your love, you know, for the Father is by keeping his commands, or it can be, uh, you know, a result. You know, the fact that we do love him and are connected to him naturally uh, results in a desire to live lives that are pleasing to him mm-hmm. and to do the things, you know, that he is, he is required of us because we know that is where our joy is found. Mm-hmm. Our joy is not as found so much in the things of this world. Uh, our joy is, you know, which you'll talk about in the last half of the chapter, our joy is, is found in being fruitful uh, under his care and under his watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Yeah. Yeah, which is what we're all looking for is that that joy in Christ shows us where that's found. Every little thing we chase, you know, Mm -hmm. and attach ourselves to. Obviously, there are other Mm -hmm. things we can attach ourselves to. Everything we chase and everything that uh, we attach our identity to uh, is uh, fruitless. Uh, But this not only produces the fruit, it produces the deep joy and he's not only talking about you know uh, joy he's talking about complete joy the joy that you know nothing can take away from mm. uh, which is the joy we have you know the joy we have in Christ mm-hmm. I love as well in, in verse 16 you know it's not just that we're saved and have our sins forgiven and get to spend eternity with with Christ but he begins kind of painting kind of the you know so what do we do now as believers which I think a lot of people have questions about that. Like I've, I've put my faith in Christ. I'm part of a local church. I, I want to follow Christ. You know, what do I do? And then he just, it's, I just love the clarity there. He says, you know, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, you know, this, this eternal fruit, um, born of the father at work yeah. in his people. No, we're, it's uh, the way that we, you know, the way that we present the gospel is so disconnected that, uh, it's very significant, you know, when you receive Christ, and it's very significant uh, when you pass from this world into the presence mm-hmm. of Christ. And, and we fail to see, you know, that it reorients our entire world and our, our purpose. You know, whether we're going, you know, to work or whether we're taking the kids to school or, you know, uh, shopping at HEB, all of that is that we represent Him and all of that is opportunity to be a reflection of Him and His heart and His character in the world for the sake of the gospel. And uh, you know, bearing much fruit, and, and of course, twice in this passage, he tells us that the the heart of that is how well you know we love one another and, and love those you know around us as well. And then, of course, we get into the last part of the, you know the chapter where we talk about you know our relationship to the world. Uh, you know, we we have an awkward relationship with the world. Uh, you know, a lot of times as Christians, we try to be cool for the sake of the gospel which means we try to identify with the world as much as we possibly can. So people will think we're cool, and if they think we're cool, maybe they'll think Christ is cool. We, we have that turned exactly upside down. Mm-hmm. You know, what is real is who Christ is, and that is what we should pursue. Many times it's going to be received very well because of who he, mm-hmm. he was. Obviously, he was very attractive to uh, tax collectors and, mm-hmm. and sinners. Mm-hmm. Uh, but many times it's going to lead to uh, rejection, and, and sometimes it's an opposite group, you know, that, that uh, the two things come from. So he's already warned them about being kicked out of the synagogue. He's already warned them that, 
you know, people who are zealous for God will, you know, pursue them thinking, you know, that they're doing, you know, God a huge favor, you know, as well. I do appreciate this, him telling this to them. I mean, he's just told them about having joy, but now he's just telling them about, you know, the suffering part of being connected to him as well. So it, it comes as no surprise that if they hated him, why should we not right. be hated as well? Um, but in no way should diminish their joy. Mm-hmm. And, and of course it does, you know, for us because we are deeply connected, mm-hmm. right. you know, to this world and the things of the world. And so it, it, it does diminish our joy. Um, but that only lets us know that we, we really haven't perceived uh, the grace that we have to the depth that it's been given us mm-hmm. in, in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. David, do you mind uh, closing us with a word of prayer? No, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much um, for the beauty of your word. We thank you for Christ Jesus and his heart to to show us um, the beauty and the wonder uh, of the gospel. Um, Father, thank you so much for the love you've given us in Christ Jesus. And may we too, um, may we love each other in the same way that Christ has, has loved us. And so we thank you for the work that you are doing in and among us. Um, Father, may we be your people here in this time and in this place, uh, people who abide in Jesus, the true vine, and in that wonderful mystery. Um, may, may we, for your glory, bear much fruit, um, even as John says here, fruit that, that will last. So, Father, we pray all of this um, in your name for your glory and our joy. Praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.